Christianity, until living memory, included in its official doctrinal formulations the principle that the Jews were collectively responsible for the death of Christ. The Vatican only formally abandoned this position just 20 years ago. And the Gospel texts, particularly the Gospel of John and also the letters of Paul, accuse the Jews collectively of murdering God himself, of deicide. Um, a German New Testament scholar called um, Gerd Ludemann has recently published a, an in-depth study of this, um, a book called The Unholy in Holy Scripture. And it confirms the general, although very shame-faced, realization that 2,000 years of quite hideous European anti-Semitism has roots in the New Testament itself. He quotes, for instance, just to take one example from Paul's first <laughs> epistle to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 14 to 16, for you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Jesus Christ, which are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets, and drove us out, and displeased God, and opposed all men. But God's wrath has come upon them at last. And Paul's attack here on the Jews for having killed God himself is here simply drawing on the anti-Semitism, which is prominent particularly in Acts. and in the Gospels themselves. Um, recently, a uh, British bishop, um, Hugh Montefiore of Birmingham, who's himself from a family of converts from Judaism, caused a, a controversy when he said that the Gospels are anti-Semitic documents and certain portions of them should not any longer be read in churches. Um, he cites, for instance, the passage in Mark's Gospel, um, where we have the parable of the wicked husbandmen, the owner of a vineyard, in this case an allegory for God, sends his son to admonish his misbehaving tenants. But, according to Mark, those tenants said to one another, this is the heir, come let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This is Mark 12, verses 7 to 10. And this allegory, composed perhaps some 30, 40 years after uh, Jesus' trial, is very clear. It is the Jews that have killed God's Son, and hence they will be utterly destroyed and their land given to Gentiles. And the stone that was rejected is quite a popular church sermon image for Jesus even today. So this central scriptural assumption that the Jews killed Christ determined Christianity's attitude to the Jews. For two millennia, they were mistreated. That's a very complex issue about <clears throat> that, you know, this position of, of, of official anti-Semitism was founded in the New Testament. And while I don't want to get into it now because I think it would inter in, you know, interrupt the flow of the mm -hmm. lecture, it's much more complex, I think, mm -hmm. than that. It's complex, but increasingly, I think that the theological consensus has been moving in favor of the acknowledgement that traditional Christian anti-Semitism has justified itself with reference to the Gospels. Yes, and St. So Paul does... Yes, justified itself with reference to the Gospels. Mm -hmm. uh, in John's Gospel consistently uses the expression who you die in Greek, and it's traditionally translated as the Jews. But there's increasingly uh, scholarly opinion that who you die in Greek can also be translated as the Judean party, which represents the sect of leaders mm -hmm. who were Sadducean and temple oriented and who in many ways <coughs> opposed Jesus as they opposed other Jewish leaders who were mounting popular quote quote revolutionary movements that were upsetting their stance especially with Rome. So, yeah I'd, I'd be happy to accept that um, I, merely because I'm not a New Testament person I'm mouthing the opinions of most of my colleagues at the Department of Theology where this issue is, is very um, Deeply and sincerely discussed, we have, for instance, a, a, a complete paper in the department on um, Christian responses to the Holocaust, which goes into this question of the possible anti-Semitism in the New Testament. Um, I'm not sure that we have to come down on one side of the discussion or, or the other. What I'm trying to say is that traditionally the Jewish experience of Christianity was a pretty negative one, and which I accounts for... Christians too often times didn't in fact justify their, that's right, yeah. uh, their tendencies toward hostility to Jews precisely on these, these, these right. documents, but I think that a lot of times there were fundamental misreadings of these documents, but because of the anti-Semitic flavor of Christianity, they used these documents invalidly to support their anti-Semitic mm -hmm. practices. Sure. No, I'm not trying to say that these documents are 
uh, ineluctably anti-Semitic. I'm merely saying that the Christian tradition overwhelmingly down the centuries has read them as such. Exactly right. right. Yeah. So I should perhaps um, rewrite this and make it a little bit more nuanced in future. Um, I cite all of this in order to explain why there has been such rabbinical mistrust of um, Christian people. For, for centuries, the Jews were mistreated on the basis of this reading of the New Testament. 